tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, don't think that your cornfields are safe from insects all season long. There are still some more bugs that are coming out that could impact this year's yield. We'll explain which ones they are. Well, we're also going to focus on diseases today. There's one disease in particular that can affect a number of different crops, and it may be the worst disease you can see in your fields. We're going to discuss how to identify it and how to control it today. One of the toughest things with grass control is keeping it out season long, especially when there are grasses that pop up mid-season, like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control this tough weed later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're not going to talk about you know, some basic thing on the farm, Darren. Well, why not? It's only <laughs> called Farm Basics. What, what do you want to talk about today, Brian? Well, what we wanted to discuss with you today is Darren and I are starting a brand new national radio show. We're going to be on the air for one hour, Monday through Friday, year round, just talking about how to raise better crops. And also we get the opportunity to take phone calls live most days. Well, I just think it's interesting. You know, Brian gives me so much grief on this TV show, yet he signs up for an hour long every day to sit right next to me. I mean, he just can't get enough of me. That's what I love about yes, it. Yes, but see, the advantage <laughs> to the radio thing, Darren, is I don't have to talk to you as much. Oh, okay. I get to talk to our callers. <laughs> and other guests that we're going to have on there and find out what's Maybe really going on. Something. Exactly. <laughs> Let's find out what's really going on around the country. What I'm probably most excited about is we're hoping to have a lot of farmers on around the country who are doing things to raise more yield. And that's what I want to do in our own operation. Well, it is really fun, though, to talk to guys all across the country because things are at different stages. I mean, you go to one part of the country and, wow, their corn's ready to harvest. And you go to another part of the country and they're just getting it planted. And, you know, you think about, well... This can't be, we aren't that terribly far away, but we really are. And then you think about just how the crop is doing across the country when you can hear people from all over telling how their crops are doing and what they're doing to manage them. I just think it's so interesting and it, it can definitely help you on your farm. Well, the reason why Darren and I decided to do this is in the past, there was no ag channel, ag radio station that was on all over the country. And for the first time ever, there's going to be, it's called rural radio. It's going to be on Sirius XM channel 80 so both on the Sirius side and the XM side you can catch channel 80 and listen to this every day from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern so that's 2 to 3 p.m. Central. Well and you think about okay we're on Sirius XM and well not everybody has Sirius XM yet well that's changing pretty quick you look at most of the new tractors that are coming out and combines and you see Sirius XM in most of them you also see it in all the new pickups that are coming out and vehicles and you know it's not that expensive anymore it's actually pretty reasonable and you get great reception no matter where you're at. Well, that's one of the things for myself as I'm traveling around the country a little bit. It is kind of hard in some of the remote areas that Darren and I do go in uh, to find good like radio. South Dakota? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But anyway, again, Darren and I are going to be hosting this new show. It'll just be called Ag PhD Radio. It'll be on every weekday, and we would invite you to call in, or you can certainly submit your questions by email, Twitter, a number of other sources. So we just want your feedback. We want your questions, and it's going to be a, a really fun time and a time where we get to interact with you. Well, one of the other fun times I like to have, Brian, is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready to extend soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready to extend soybeans. Extend your control. Your equipment's ready. The seed's in the barn. You have a strategy to overcome the challenges you'll face and your crop protection products are pretty well locked in. But maybe you still haven't finalized your fertilizer plans. If not, visit agroliquid.com today. With products formulated for superior nutrient uptake, unsurpassed application flexibility, and proven by years of extensive research, this may be the season to take your yields to the next level using agriculture liquid fertilizers. Today's Case IH equipment is packed with industry-leading technology, and Titan Machinery has the experts to make it perform to its maximum potential. 
We have a team of specialists and the entire Titan Machinery Network to provide you with the expertise to keep up with today's advanced machines. Whether it be for your Case IH planters, sprayers, or precision farming equipment, our experts have the answers to get the most out of your equipment investment. Maximize your productivity with Titan Machinery, better solutions. What's new for 2013? Challenge 2050. Challenge 2050 is a two-component system consisting of a nutrient and a biological additive. This groundbreaking fertilizer contains mycorrhizal fungi, which provide an extended transport system that allows water and nutrients to be delivered directly into the root. Challenge 2050 can increase yield and efficiency of your standard fertilizer program. Challenge 2050 is the future of fertilizer. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get Challenge 2050 today. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. A proven herbicide for decades, Dicamba can provide burn-down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use Dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. Late season corn insects, Darren. Which ones are we talking about and what are we going to do about them? Well, you know, there are a number of different bugs that can impact your cornfields later on in the season. We talk about things like corn rootworm beetles clipping off silks. We look at corn leaf aphids that are way up at the top of the plant. You look at corn borers and a lot of guys say, well, corn borers, I've been using BT corn. Yeah, you know what? There are corn borers still around and just plant some refuge corn and you'll find out real quick. Corn borer is still an issue and there are other bugs too from stock year to year. Borer, yep, stock borer for one that we've always had around the outside edges of our fields. Yeah, there are a number of different insects out there. So the number one thing we always encourage you to do with insects is don't just automatically treat, it's always take a look at your fields. So this corn leaf aphid, that's kind of where I wanted to start because that's something that you say, oh, come on, it's just a bunch of little bugs on there. What harm are they really gonna do? Well, especially if you are in drier conditions, you're going for higher yields, things like that. Corn leaf aphids could take 5, 10, 15 bushels off your yield, just bam, like that. Well, here's one of the problems with corn leaf aphids. They generally like to be towards the top of the plant. So they're right up around the tassel, they're right up around your ears. I mean, just buy some sweet corn from a roadside stand and chances are you'll see some corn leaf aphids once you start peeling away the outside layer or two you know, of leaves around that ear. So corn leaf aphids can be annoying and they can also be an impactful on those upper leaves of the corn plant that are gonna catch that sunlight energy to finish out your corn ears at the end of the year. So yeah, they can mess with pollination. They can mess with your late season ear fill. There's a lot of problems, especially when you get quite a few of them. If your plants are under stress, you're probably looking at just 50 to 100 per plant is the threshold. If your plants are under absolutely no stress, everything is perfect, you might be able to get by with 200 to 400 aphids it's per plant before you start having a major issue. Well, when corn is at these price levels, Brian, I just don't understand why you wouldn't be aggressive going after it. Well, Especially I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why is because you've got to hire a plane to come out and do it. It's right. not something where you That's say, true. well, I'm already out there spraying my herbicide. I'll just throw it in. But there are a lot of farmers who are automatically now spraying fungicide late in the season. So they're already getting the plane out anyway. It's the right timing for spraying corn leaf aphids. So that's the point where before that plane does come out, you want to scout your fields. If you've got a bunch of leaf aphids, it only costs maybe three or four bucks to throw in, let's say some fanfare or something like that, generic bifenthrin, and you can get great control of that as well as something we haven't mentioned yet, Darren, spider mites. Well, if we get dry again, <laughs> you know, and you look back at 2012, this was an issue all over the place. We saw spider mites where guys had never seen them before, hadn't seen them for years, and bam, we get a drought year and spider mites become a problem again. And that's why product selection becomes important too. You know, anytime you're going to be going out across the field, Make sure you're checking to look for bugs, you know, no matter what crop it is, because you can almost always add an insecticide to whatever else you're doing for just a few bucks. But you say, wait a second, I've got spider mites out there. How are they different? What products work on spider mites that you may not be thinking about? Yeah, so most of the pyrethroids, things like Warrior, Silencer, Declare, Asana, they're awesome on just about every insect you're going to have in corn and soybeans, except they don't stop spider mites. In fact, they will flare up spider mites because they're going to kill some beneficial 
male insects, unfortunately. And if they kill everything else in the field, that just leaves spider mites to really thrive. So the main two things that you can use would be something like Lore's ban, or capture or the generic fanfare as Brian mentioned. Okay, so with those spider mites, they do flare up when you have drier conditions. The reason why is normally they're going to get a disease when the conditions are relatively moist out there. So we'll see, this year started out wet. Of course, last spring in our area started out wet too, and all of a sudden we had drought. So who knows what's gonna happen here in the next few weeks. Now, one other thing I'd mentioned on products, there are specific miticides, but typically they cost a little bit more money than what your lores ban or capture or fanfare do. And that's why we mentioned those products first. Well the good news here is when you are or if you are out spraying fungicide at full tassel you can get those corn leaf aphids, you can get spider mites, you can also get the next bug we wanted to discuss and that is adult corn rootworm beetles. Anytime you're seeing adult corn rootworm beetles out in your field, and I don't care what kind they are, if they're northerns or westerns or southerns or whatever, it doesn't make any difference to me. What those guys like to do is go clip off silks on your ears. So as your corn ears are forming and the silks come out, those rootworm beetles for whatever reason go right after it. And I've seen fields across the country where guys have had so many rootworm beetles out in their fields, they've literally clipped the silks down to just about nothing and we didn't get pollination on the ears. And there's nothing more sad to me than looking at a cornfield that has all kinds of potential and there are no kernels on the ears because those silks got clipped off. Now this is especially an issue if you're going to plant corn in that same field again next year because what do you think those adult corn rootworm beetles are going to do shortly after they come out? Well, pretty soon they're going to mate, they're going to lay eggs, and now you've got a major issue going into next year. So what a lot of farmers are doing today, in addition to using insecticide, using BT corn to control these root worms. They're controlling the root worm beetles when they come out later in the season with insecticide. And all the products we've already mentioned, even the Silencer Declare, the Fanfare Lorsban, all of them will control adult corn root worm beetles for very little money. So yeah, it's really inexpensive. And also keep an eye on your other crops like soybeans, for example, because some of these adult corn root worm beetles will move into those soybean fields. They'll lay eggs there as well and have corn root worm larvae feeding on your corn that goes in those fields next year. Okay, so we also mentioned corn borers, we mentioned stock borers, there's several other insects. A lot of these insects can be controlled by BT's stock borer, gets to be big a lot of times, it's out in the grassy areas of the field, and then it will move in. So you usually see stock borers just right along the borders of fields, so that's where to look for those. With corn borer, they can blow in anywhere. Most of these bugs can blow in anywhere, but stock borer is real particular. It's gonna come out of grass, typically, and affect your borders. And I was just gonna make a comment, too. Anytime you have these borers that get inside the plant, you can control them halfway is decent when they're outside or when they're still in the <laughs> right, egg stage, right. but once they're in the middle of the stock, you really can't get them. So you have to be careful, you have to be scouting uh, and keep an eye for those bugs. And as Brian is mentioning with stock borers, uh, when you're spraying insecticide, if you're just spraying insecticide, we have a lot of guys now that like to go around the end rows yep. and spray a little bit out into the grass too to make sure they're controlling grasshoppers and stock borers and some of these pests that can move into your fields. Well, these insects can do a lot of damage in your field if left untreated, as can our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can be more results in your bin. An average of 9.9 .9 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. There are more mounds to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrec technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. For years, 
Farm Logic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Sclerotinia, white mold. Commonly, we're just talking about this as white mold, but this is one of the worst diseases that a farmer can get in soybeans, in sunflowers, in a number of different crops. Let's talk a little about what it is, where it comes from, and what you do to stop it. Okay, well, these little soybeans here, we aren't too worried about white mold just yet when they're real small. <laughs> right. But as the season progresses, as we get up into those reproductive stages, you know, we're always looking at where can that infection get into the plant. And with soybeans, what happens is we've got a lot of blossoms that are going to happen in July for us and into August. And as we have all these blossoms, you know, the plants abort quite a few of them. And as those flowers die off, that's a spot where infection can get into the plants. That's also about the time that white mold is going to start in your fields. So you really have to be careful once we get into the reproductive stages in soybeans. Okay, that's later on in the season though. I want to back it up just a little bit. Let's talk about right at the beginning of the season or even the fall before. What you'll find out in fields is after white mold has been in your field, there will be little what's called sclerotia, little black pieces out there, little black chunks out there. There is a product that you can spray on your farm called Contans. Now, we've only used a little bit of this on our farm. We've never seen any real big gain, but we've never had a serious white mold problem either. I mean, we've had some white mold, no huge deal. But there are many farmers I've talked to that they swear by Contans now. They'll use it either in the fall or in the spring, and they'll spray just on bare ground, and that does biologically suppress these sclerotia so it, in effect, controls them so we don't have the white mold later on in the year. Okay, so white mold is a fungus, and what's going to happen is once the season gets going, if there is ample moisture, and especially if there gets to be some crop canopy even, then you start seeing little mushrooms that will pop up if you get wetter conditions for a few days. Well, those little mushrooms can shoot spores out, and that's the white mold that then can infect the plants. Okay, so you say, all right, well, I didn't get contans down this spring, uh, so here I am, we're going into these reproductive phases here real soon. What can I do to protect myself? Well, you can certainly use some foliar fungicide. Like Brian said, white mold is a fungus, so you can use fungicide to control it. But you have to pick the right ones because not every fungicide has activity on this particular disease. The one that we like the most and that we use on our farm is a product called Dolmark. Now, if you know you've got a white mold issue or you're really concerned that it could be an issue in certain fields, you need to get out there at R1. So at first bloom, get out there with an application of Domark. Then come back at first pod and put another application on. And you may say, wait a second, there's no way I can get over all my acres with two applications. If you're gonna just do one application, I would probably shoot somewhere in the middle at uh, mid to full bloom. All right, Darren mentioned Domark, but there's also Topsin or Incognito. There is Proline too in several other crops. A lot of farmers are using Proline with pretty good success. We think it's maybe just a little bit hard on soybeans. You gotta be a little careful with the rate and that kind of thing. But the number one thing I would tell you with white mold is you've gotta be out there ahead of time. If you start seeing major white mold infection in your crop, that's typically when farmers will call us and say, oh, oh, I got white mold all over the place. Now what do I do? Well, I'm sorry, but you already lost a bunch of yield. It's too too late to do anything to recover that yield you've already given up. Now with white mold, there are just a few other things. When you're out in those fields that have white mold this year, consider doing some tillage in those areas. If you're in a no-till situation, you had lots of white mold, then crop rotation is gonna be one of the things you're gonna to have to do. Well, you may still have white mold issues because the sclerotia can live for many years in the soil. It's just every year you go away from a susceptible crop, you're much less likely to have a problem going forward. The other thing is farmers talk about going to wider rows. Even in our own operation, we used to see more white mold 
old problem when we were drilling and we had soybeans every seven inches as opposed to today where we have soybeans every 30 inches. Yep, the other thing, Brian, of course, is variety selection that we want to talk about. And there really aren't varieties that are completely resistant to white mold, but there certainly is a difference in tolerance. All right, one last thing I wanted to talk about with white mold was this. There are some herbicides out there that have fungicidal properties, Darren. I don't know if I necessarily <laughs> believe that, Brian, but there are certainly some herbicides that could help on white mold. Okay, so Cobra, for example, that gets talked about in soybeans a lot. And actually, when you look at the test, Cobra is not that much worse than the fungicidal treatments. Oh, and some it's even better. Right, because Cobra a lot of times will thin out the soybean plants. You're going to get more air movement through there, and when you have more air movement, you are going to have fewer problems with white mold. Well, there's certainly a lot of diseases that could impact crops. White mold is one of them. You need to manage it with something pre-emerged like contans and then you need to come back in later on with a fungicide as well. And you may be able to mix those fungicides right with some weed control to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Aaron, it's nice to see the sun, unfortunately, our Weed of the Week likes the sun as well. We see our Weed of the Week field sandbur pop up quite commonly in fields late in the season where the canopy might be just a little bit thin. Well, when you think about field sandbur, it's a warm season grass, so it doesn't normally get a start real early in the season, but it does pop up a little bit later. There's a few things about field sandbur, you know, that really stand out. Obviously, the burrs themselves are pretty easy to identify, but when I look at field sandbur, I think it has a little bit of a different color to it than a lot of the other grasses. Like, for example, with the foxtails, they look a lot more green to me, where the field sandbur looks a little more bluish green or winter green kind of color. Yes, and but that's it, one thing I'll notice. Yeah, but it is kind of hard to distinguish this from the other grasses. It's got a hairy ligule. It may look like like just any foxtail early on in the season. So what I always do to try to figure out whether it's a foxtail or it's woolly cup grass or field sandbur is I'm gonna dig the plant up because the nice thing with grasses is the seed's gonna be right below the soil surface usually. You dig that up, you find the little burr there and it's a no-brainer, it's field sandbur. Okay, well with field sandbur identification isn't a real big deal. And like I say, especially late in the season when it actually has the burrs on it, it's pretty obvious what it is. The tough thing is getting it under control because a lot of the pre-emerge herbicides just aren't as good right. on field sandbur as they are on things like foxtails. So when we look at corn, for example, eradicane is probably the best product that I've seen on it, <laughs> but you have to use seven pints per acre or a little <laughs> stronger to do a decent job on field sandbur. You know, you could use something like the Balance products. Balance Flex has done a nice job on field well, sandbur uh, nice. if you get yeah, a high rate up. and you get plenty of moisture. With most of the pre's on corn, we just look for suppression. Then post-emerge, if you're using Roundup in Roundup Ready Corn, it's awesome on field sandbur, and actually Liberty and Liberty Link corn isn't too bad either. Okay, so if you don't have Roundup or Liberty corn, what are you going to do? Accent's about the only choice. You've but gotta you got to get, get it early. Yeah, you've got to get that sandbur when it's small. The good news is usually it is small kind of late in the season. It doesn't start real early on in the year. Okay, in soybeans, we actually do a little better with the pre's. Treflan and high rates of prowl actually do a pretty good job. Post-emerge, post we've got Roundup again and Roundup Ready beans or Liberty and Liberty Link beans. That's nice, but also the grass killers that we're going to use for volunteer corn like Select Max do a decent job as well. Okay, how about in wheat? What should you start with pre-emerge? Well, in wheat, you have to start with prepare pre-emerge, and that doesn't do too bad a job. We don't normally see a lot of field sandbar out in our wheat, but if you did, I'd start with prepare. Then post-emerge, come back in with something like Axial to give it another shot and a different mode of action. Now you've hit it with an ALS and you've hit it with an ACCAs. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week field sandbar, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready.
Will my spray work differently in the morning versus the afternoon versus the evening? The answer is that it can and often does. We'll explain how to manage that in today's Iron Talk. On our farm, we're looking for a day that isn't windy, has no chance of rain, is sunny, warm, has all the crop and weeds growing actively, and falls in the middle of the week if possible. How many of those days do you get on your farm? We get two or three of them each year on our farm, the way it seems, and after that, we're searching for a few hours here or there where we can knock some acres out until the next couple of hours of suitable weather. Wind seems to be one of those things that is certain to be a problem. Because of that, our operation, and likely yours as well, has been spraying many of the acres either in the early mornings or later in the evenings. There are a few challenges to watch out for, though. Moisture is critical, and I'm not just speaking about the chance of rain. You also have to look at dew. If the plants are all dewy in the morning, you need to wait to spray until the dew is burned off. Otherwise, adding more water droplets to those already wet leaves will just cause all the moisture to run off, or if not, your spray solution will be diluted that much more. The other thing, especially in the evenings, is that spraying too late in the day may cause the spray droplets not to dry on the leaf, effectively making your rain fast times much longer. In other words, if your product is safe from rain if it's sprayed on two hours before a rain, but you spray it at 9 p.m. and the humidity comes up and perhaps dew sets in, whatever the case, you may now have extended your time before the product is safe from rain until 10 a.m. the next morning. So check the forecast before spraying and be aware of any moisture that may impact your spray. If moisture is not a concern, time of day really doesn't matter in the performance of your spray. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is ahead above the rest. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they are essential. TJ Micromix is a profit proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The synergistic fertilizer mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrack technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. Honey Wagon? Can the sweet talk. Out here we treat manure, and when we talk treats, we don't mean cupcakes. Treating manure with more than manure nutrient manager can reduce solids in your pit or lagoon and ammonia levels in confinement buildings. PU, try N and P. MTM is the first and only nutrient manager proven to reduce nitrogen loss and phosphorus lockup. That's fertilizer loaded with yield potential. Looking for proof? Check the bin. Isn't that sweet? Results you can't ignore, a pit you finally can. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new S Cube Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. Well, that's all time we have for this week's show, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Subsurface drainage tile is used around your home and in farmers' fields to remove excess water safely. As water filters down through several feet of soil, it is purified naturally. To learn more about clean water leaving farm fields, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.